Catherine Hover is a woman on the move. She is the purveyor of fun founder and CEO of Palette Cafe in Saratoga Springs and Schenectady, New York. She moved to the area from New Orleans, then opening her first venture, a paint and sip studio in Saratoga Springs. Now she leads Palette, which is a social destination dedicated to supporting women in career and in life. She currently resides in Saratoga Springs with her husband and three young daughters. Let's start off with how you got to where you are. You moved to Saratoga Springs from New Orleans in 2011. What drew you to the area? Um, hi, Megan. Thanks for having me. Um, so I, I don't know if I was, I, I guess I was driven to the area. Yeah. <laughs> um, my, my husband at the time, well, is my husband now. <laughs> So funny. Um, it was for his job. At the time, he was working for a company called, um, um, why can't I think of the name right now? Anyway, it was a, it, in the dredging industry. He moved up here for um, the GE cleanup project. They were cleaning up all the chemicals out of the Hudson River. And it was a, um, it was a five year long project. And we were new, we were just gotten engaged or we were planning to get married. And the plan was just to move up here for five years and then um, save up some money and then move back home to New Orleans and start a family and everything. But when we moved to Saratoga, we fell in love with it. I I mean, we've never experienced Four Seasons before, and it was this adorable, cute downtown area that gave us that urban kind of feel, but um, also has all the things like we love to do, like the hiking and the parks and the state park. And um, so, yeah, we just, we stuck it out. I mean, I, right when I got here, I realized that there was something missing when it came to like the experiences. Um, there were lots of restaurants, lots of bars, but there wasn't anything kind of um, that I felt was different. Um, so anyway, we opened Saratoga Paint and Sip Studio a year after we moved here, um, and we'll be celebrating that business. It's going to be eight in April. So that's what we did kind of right off the bat. We opened Paint and Sip um, a year after we moved here, and it took off. I mean, it was the first of its kind in the capital region, and basically, if people don't know what it is, it's a paint studio and a bar so you can show up and you um you know you are walk through a painting that's being featured that night and by the end of the night you leave feeling like you've really accomplished something and it's just a great alternative night out besides like going to dinner and a movie being a transplant can be difficult and presents some challenges, you know, all of its own. Uh, I'm a transplant myself, you know, moving from the Pittsburgh area uh, in 2000. So I know what challenges and just, you know, coming from a different area. So what challenges did you face specifically and how did you overcome them? Um, I mean, yeah, it, it was really difficult to move to an area that I didn't know. I didn't know anybody besides Mark and some of his coworkers and, um, and he worked 12 hour days, you know, seven days a week. So I had to find something to do. I mean, that's kind of how, how paint and sip came about. I didn't want to become just a bar fly. I wanted to go and meet people and find something to do that was going to benefit me, you know, um, and my mom is the one who actually told me like, go find a paint and sip. Those are super fun. Um, and there wasn't one. So I just really immersed myself into this business and trying to figure out how to get, get it off the ground and get it started. And I was really, I mean, busy with that, um, getting it started and everything. Um, and you know, it's, it's tough. It's really tough to find your tribe, your community of people. I mean, when I was home, I relied heavily on my family network um, and people that you've met along the way. And so moving to a new area where you don't know anybody, um, it's important to find these experiences where you can go and meet people that are that are not just like eating and drinking and or shopping. I did a lot of shopping. <laughs> um, <laughs> And so, um, yeah, I would say paint and sip and just, just finding early on a purpose and something to keep me busy was, was life changing, really. So you, you didn't stop there um, with the paint and sip. You got that off the ground and then you opened a, a successful, it's really um, experienced some, some early ex success, but the co-working space and cafe palette which you've also announced plans, um, you know, you're in the midst of opening a second location. So tell us a little bit about that. How did you come up with this concept and how are you filling a void in the community? 
So um, years after we opened Peyton Sand, we, we grew that. We opened two more locations, another one in the capital region and another one in Burlington, Vermont. And simultaneously, I was growing my family. So um, I currently now have three daughters at the time. Um, I had two and I was suffering majorly from postpartum after my second daughter and I was feeling very isolated and I was feeling like I wasn't being challenged with my business anymore and I needed a place to go and there wasn't one that I felt served me in the unique way that um, that I needed. So yes, there are co-working spaces. Yes, there are cafes, like wonderful cafes all over the capital region, but there wasn't one that really spoke to me and I found myself holding a lot of meetings out in the public, you know, like out in coffee shops or, you know, I would go to a co-working space for a meeting, but it never really reflected me as, as who I am. And I don't really consider myself like fitting into that corporate businesswoman box. Um, and so I, I felt like I couldn't be the only one who felt underrepresented in this space. Um, I, again, like the coffee shops I was going to, I just, I felt like, you know, I am having a really serious conversation, intimate conversation with someone, a client or potential, um, partner or whatever. And I'm in a coffee shop. I don't feel like I have intimacy. I don't feel like it reflects me. And so uh, that's kind of like how it, you know, uh, evolved into Palette Cafe and community, um, and yeah, I mean, and, it, and I wasn't the only one. I kind of put it out into the world after we opened the cafe, if people wanted to join the membership and have the space, um, the accessibility and the resources and the upstairs space that was, you know, underutilized retail space at the time. And um, I just kind of put it out there for people to pre-join as a means to raise capital to build out the space. And we opened, you know, in less than six, 60 days later, we opened with 50 founding members for our Saratoga location. And, and, and it was at that moment that I felt, oh my gosh, this is so much bigger than me. There are, there are women and men out there that, that are not being represented in these co-working spaces and, and in cafes and just giving them the tools and the resources and the programming and, and just the community of people who can um, support you when you need it in things that they've had already have experience in right so like we think we're the only ones going down this path like i'm a mom and i'm a business owner and i'm doing all these things well i'm not the only one doing a million things at one time right. and the notion that i'm the only one is just a bit you know ridiculous it's just ridiculous so i found by by you know showcasing like the need and being vulnerable and just being honest with people like look this is what i want to do this is what i'm this is my goal um do you want to come along for this ride and that's that's at the time where i felt most supported and most like okay we're on to something here and we need to we need to grow it and we need to help more people Catherine, you don't uh come from a traditional home background um, and you know what I'm getting at. You have three young girls at home. You basically have flipped the script uh, when it comes to having your husband stay at home to help raise the children. What have you learned from this experience? And what would you just say to other women who might see themselves in the same uh, situation? Um, well, first of all, I, I could not do all that I'm doing without my husband, my partner here, you know, he's, he's along for this ride. He is pivotal to the success of it. Um, every day it's like, I lean on him and it kind of just, it, you know, it's always been my, pro my thought process that I, I wanted to do something more. I wanted to not necessarily be a business owner, but I want, I enjoy helping people and getting, and getting them through things and helping them get out of their own way. You know, like that's always just been something I have loved to do. It, it fills me up. And I've always wanted to be a mother. I've always wanted to have a family, like at a very young age, I've always, I felt like I would be a mom, you know? And so many of the times we, we hear these stories, right? Where we're like, oh, I had this great career. We were on this awesome path and then I got pregnant. And then I quit my job and now I'm sitting, you know, 15 years later, my kids don't need me anymore. And there's no way that I could return to that career that I had was, you know, forging for myself. And, you know, you have to pivot and you have to think about it. And it's a huge transformation that so many women deal with. And how I've managed to shift that in, in our own way was when paint and sip really started to take off and I became pregnant. 
you know, we talked about it. It wasn't his job wasn't something that he felt he really even wanted to do, you know? So we made a decision together that he would quit his job. I would, I would, we would grow paint and sit together. And, um, and that's what we would do. And it's just, what I've learned from it is that, um, it's, it's hard work, you know, and it takes yeah. massive amounts of coordinating and communicating and, um, compassion. And, you know, it's, it's, we are, we are dictating and demonstrating exactly what we want our lives to be like. And it doesn't look like, you know, other people's and that's fine. And so I guess what I like to tell people is like, you don't have to quit your job to be home. Like you don't have to give up one for the other. You can do it simultaneously, but you need the support. You need the people on board to help you do that. You can't do it alone. And, and let's be honest, it's just not fun doing it alone. Right. You know? so, um, it's like, it takes a lot of effort. Um, I work, I work really hard to make it look easy. Um, and it's not <laughs> so <laughs> like those are the kind of things that I guess I've taken away from it. It's like my, mm, I wasn't going to be content with just staying home. That's just not for me personally. I would have, I would have gone crazy. You know, I just, I can't, that's just not yeah. who I, you know, what I saw myself, my life looking like. And, um, and I just, I, I truly do believe that you can do all the things that you want to do as long as you have the help. So that, that leads us to the next question. Why is women's empowerment important, especially now? Um, I think that it, it goes back, you know, just in my upbringing. I'm not, not to say that my parents didn't do their best and raise me to, you know, all that sort of stuff. But I think being from the South, um, we, and not just women in general, we, te we teach young girls at an early age you know, this is the way it looks like, act like a lady, you know, do this, do that. And I never fit that mold ever, ever. I mean, I wasn't, you know, I've always, you know, just been who I am. Right. And it wasn't, and, and, you know, even before I became a mother of three children, three girls, um, I, I always felt like, man, I have a voice and it's, and what I have to say has value. And it wasn't until I valued that opinion that anybody else you know, paid any attention, you know, so and then and then I became a mom to a, a daughter and my whole world just was, was like, wait a minute, I am not going to raise these girls to believe that they can't do whatever they want to do, you know, and it, it kind of just goes full circle. Like, I do truly believe it's my mission to help more women help more women, right? Like, let's get out of our own way. Let's do it together. We can do anything we want to do. And, um, and, and I almost feel like it's the universe, like, keeping me on this path by giving me all these girls. <laughs> well, you're setting a good example for them. You have three in your household. Um, I have four in mine. So it's, it's really important to be good role models and show them that, you know, you can do it all. Um, but it does take a support group. It takes um, patience. What is next for you and Palette? Well, two weeks um, before this whole COVID thing happened, um, we had signed a lease for a second location in Schenectady, New York. And, um, and so we're, we're moving forward with that. We have amazing partners um, in Palette now who are going to help support us move this forward. And, um, and again, it goes back to my mission has always been just to help women, help more women, and be a great example for my, for my daughters. Um, for the next generation, like it's, it's hard. It, it's a lot of work. It, um, it, it's not always easy, but I feel like we can make it more fun. We can make it less difficult when we do it together. And so, um, again, focusing too on areas that don't have these resources that don't have these things. Like I, at one point I was like going down to New York city every other week to go to a women's workshop. And it's like, why don't we have this up here? Why don't we have this in these smaller communities? We have power, we have value, we have hardworking women and men who need the, that same support. And it wasn't being offered um, to me here where I am and I I'm I'm gonna bet that it's not being offered in a lot of places and those are the places that I see Pala being. Well we are going on to our next segment here which is called Baker's Dozen. So it's rapid fire questions 13 and all with short answers. So we're gonna start with the first one. What show are you currently binge watching? 
Um, it's that show like Little Fire, Big Fires, every it's either Little Fires everywhere. Big fires everywhere. <laughs> I don't know. But um, one of our book clubs read the book and, and I'm watching it. I think it's on Hulu right now. I'm a little behind, but I'm sure. very into it. One celebrity who you would want to join the Pallet family? Ellen DeGeneres. One thing you miss about New Orleans? My mom. <laughs> Favorite four letter word? Kind. <laughs> Darn it, I thought you were gonna say something else. <laughs> Do you prefer real or fake plants? Real plants. If you were to expand palette outside of New York State, where would it be? New Orleans, easy. A color you would never dye your hair? Uh, um, brown? <laughs> <laughs> uh, parenting hack while having three young girls? Um, a uh, parenting hack to three young girls. Um, shit, I don't know. <laughs> there you have know. it. There's the four letter, letter word I was looking for. <laughs> um, um, I would say go, go easy on them. <laughs> okay, that's good. Uh, favorite uh, palate cafe food? The cinnamon buns. Next big venture? Next big venture would be palate Schenectady. <laughs> Favorite phrase? Done is better than perfect. Now this next question comes from our last guest uh, with Indiana University of Pennsylvania, Dr. Gail Wilson. Uh, she's in the communications department there. She asked if you could go back and do it all over again, what would you change? Um, I would, I would sprinkle more vacations in. <laughs> That's that's very honest answer. <laughs> ask you you actually get to ask our next guest the next question. So what is that? Oh man, I I always love asking successful or aspiring to be successful or you know powerful women. I like to ask them what what would they tell their younger selves? You know, are there twenty something? I always call it twenty stupid. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> what what would you have? really found value in hearing from your future self. Wonderful, thank you. I that's a great question. We really appreciate your time. Um, you know, very honest answers. Love learning more about you, who you are. Love following your successes. And uh, we celebrate you. Thank you for being a guest here on Influence Her. Thank you so much, Megan. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for your time. All right, talk to you soon.